Happy Sunday again. It's 4th of July weekend, or to be honest with you, I'm not sure which one is. This week or next week. So first 4th of July weekend, July 2nd. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, be with us now as we uh, once again try and dig into your word. I pray that you uh, work through me. But I pray most of all that, um, well, that I hear what I'm supposed to hear from you. And then I simply hand it off. And whether or not it's what others need to hear, well, that's between you and them, not between, you know, me and you right now. I just got to say what you need to tell me now. In the name of your son, amen. The gospel is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. It's a very short gospel, so you'll be happy with this today. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Whoever welcomes a righteous man in the name of a righteous person will receive a reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. You know, as I prepared for this sermon uh, this past week, I, I have to be honest with you, I, I had the funniest uh, recollection. I, I started working on it last, about a week ago, and, and I'd been working out in the yard all day, you know, I was out weed whacking the whole nine yards. It was hot, so I had my shirt off, just wearing a pair of shorts and walking around. And, uh, you know, when you weed whack, you get dirt all over yourself, you get sweat all over yourself, of course, you get, uh, you know, pieces of grass. And when I got done, I, I, I was itching. I mean, I was just itchy. I mean, I was itchy. I was uncomfortable the whole nine yards. So what do you do when you have that? I went into the shower and I got into the shower and I thought, man, this really feels good. I started to look at myself and, and to think to myself, you know, have I ever had a bad shower in my entire life? I mean, seriously, let me ask you that question. Have you ever had a bad shower in your entire life? Now, I've had some showers that are better than others. I mean, this one, you know, last week, which, by the way, is, happens at least once or twice a day now, and especially in this time of the year, you know. Uh, but, I mean, in my entire life, I've had some showers that have been, you know, better than others, but then I've had some that haven't been so good. But even when I was in, like, Guatemala, and it was up in the mountains and it was cold and it was in the fall. And, and so it was really cold. And I got up in the morning and I knew I hadn't had a shower the day before. So I wanted to take a shower and there was no hot water. And I had to get in there and I had to jump in. Even then, just the fact that the ingredients of that water over my body and, and being able to cleanse myself, I never had a bad shower. It has to do with what's going into it. it. has to do with what you want out of it. I say that because of the gospel that we've read this day. The gospel, to just to rephrase it in my own words, it basically is saying, you know, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Whoever welcomes, you know, me welcomes the one who sent me, which is the Father. And whoever welcomes a prophet, because he's a prophet, will get a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person because he's a righteous person will get a righteous person's reward. And, and whoever gives even a little glass of water to one of these little ones, whether it be a child or just he always called, you know, his disciples children, because he's a disciple, surely he won't lose his reward. You know, I thought about it. Whoever welcomes. The word welcomes here actually comes in this translation, but in most other translations, it comes as receives. So whoever receives, because it's you receiving them. You receiving them. I mean, and that if, if you go, you know, because of Jesus to somebody, they welcome Jesus in and the Father in because you're in them. And it's what's inside you. It's part of what your character is. I started thinking about that sense of character, and I, I thought to myself, you know, I, it really does matter in this life who we sort of associate ourselves with. Not necessarily commit to, but who do we associate ourselves with? If you don't believe me, I mean, let me use a really poor example, a really bad analogy. But, you know, I mean, if you look at it, the ingredients of bread 
and the ingredients of beer are pretty much the same thing, except for one thing. I mean, in bread, you have grain, you have water, you have yeast, and then some flavoring. In beer, you have grain, and you have water, and you have yeast, and then some flavoring. The flavoring for the bread, of course, is salt. The flavoring for the beer is hops. That little bit of difference makes a big difference, doesn't it? That little bit of difference makes a big difference. And it's the ingredient, it's the character ingredient. The character ingredient. Now, you know, Jesus never said, you're the hops of the world. He said, you're the salt to the world. So I don't think he wants you to be a beer. I think he wants you to be more like bread. And when Jesus says, you know, whoever receives, welcomes a prophet, because he's a prophet or a righteous person, because they're a righteous person, receives their reward. Now, I searched the scripture really hard to try and find out what's the reward of a prophet? What's the reward of a righteous person? You know, biblically, there's nothing that spells that out. But most things that I read and most things that I looked at, and it makes sense to me, is that you don't receive some sort of reward like, you know, uh, you won the grand prize. It's not like that. What you receive is you receive the character ingredients of that prophet, the character ingredients of that righteous person. And when somebody receives you, they receive the character ingredients of you, the character ingredients of what you've become, even if you're in process. You see, when you receive a prophet, the prophet is one who has deep trust in the Lord, one who is a spokesperson for the Lord. And so therefore, all of a sudden, you have a sense of, I'm with someone that is larger than themselves because they're so connected to the living God. When you receive a righteous person, for the sake of a righteous person, you receive a sense of this ability to know that they are clean with the Lord, that they got a really good shower in baptism, that somehow that they reflect their life to show what God has done in their life. And it's all about welcoming. It's all about receiving. I mean, how well do you receive? How well do you welcome? You know, I thought about it. Have I ever had a bad welcome? Have I ever bad had a bad receiving? Well, yeah, I've received folks that, to tell you the truth, haven't offered me a whole lot. And for them, I'll receive them, try and take the good I can. But then, to tell you the truth, put my boundary up and move away from them. I've had people where I've, you know, they've probably welcomed me in and maybe I wasn't at my best. And you know what? I would hope that they look at it and say, well, he's not at his best. Maybe we won't close the door, but I'm not going to necessarily leave it open. I'm at least closing a screen door to them because I got to keep some kind of separation from me and them. Our family members, our, our, our friends that come around a lot of times, you know, are very good for us, but it's what their flavoring is. Is their flavoring salt or is their flavoring, you know, hops? What are they doing for your life? What are the people that you associate with? How are they helping you in your relationship spiritually? Or do they distract from you spiritually? You see, you can have a really great welcome, and then you can have not so great of a welcome. You can be a really great welcoming, but then sometimes, well, to be honest with you, you might not be the greatest of all welcomes. I had a friend of mine call the other day. It's a guy that I've been friends with for over 50 years. He's, he's a, just a really good friend of mine. And he was calling and he was kind of uptight. I mean, he's just a little bit younger than me and he's got a son that's, you know, a grown man, married, child. And uh, he's struggling with uh, alcohol addiction. And, uh, you know, my friend knows I am a recovering alcoholic for 32 years. And he, he called up because finally his son seems to be for once again, trying to do something about it. And he wanted to know what it was and what he was supposed to do. 
And in the midst of it, I tried to give him as much you know, guidance as I could and say, look, let the professionals hand what they're doing. Don't you tell him what to do. That's going to make things worse. But I'll tell you this, if somebody wants to get healed from addiction, if they really want it, they can have the worst counsel in the world and they will, you know, they'll overcome it. They'll, you know, they'll get through it. They'll recover from it. But if somebody really doesn't want to get well, they can have the best counselors and the best support and everything else, and they won't get well. It's got to be their choice. And so don't try and ever take away that decision that they're going to make. He goes, yeah, but what am I supposed to do? I said, he's your son. Be there for him. He's a man. Treat him like a man. And if you want to point out something about him that, you know, hasn't been real good, sort of just say, look, when you drink, this is what I don't like. Don't say you I don't like. Keep his character intact, but go after the behavior. And he said, yeah, but what else? And I said, I'll tell you this right now, my friend. The healthier you get in the way you react to the people around you, the healthier everybody around you is going to be able to get. Have you ever thought about that? That the healthier you keep yourself in mind, body, and spirit, the healthier everyone else that crosses your path has to becoming healthy. Because like beer and like bread, you flavor them. But how are you flavoring them? You know, the last part of that scripture for this day that's really powerful to me is where Jesus says, and anyone who gives a glass of water to one of these little ones, surely they won't lose their reward. I pondered that for a little bit of a while because what it says is the smallest things that we do. In other words, just in the way we welcome someone in maybe the crossing of our path, just by the kindness in a smile, even that small, we have an influence. And I want to close with a thought that, to tell you the truth, that I read. It's a quote from Mother Teresa, one of the ones that I love the most. She once said this, all of us want to do great things for God, but most of us won't be able to do great things for God. But all of us can do small things for God with great love. In your life, for all those people that cross your path, flavor them with the salt of the earth as you are. And do all those small things with great love. For it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.